Hello and welcome back. I'm Joanna Naden and today I'm going to be reading you a story from Penny Dreadful Cooks Up a Calamity and the story is Penny Dreadful and the Birthday Wish. I'll read you the first half of the story today and then the second half you can catch up on tomorrow. Mostly I do not see the point of wishes because they absolutely almost never come true. For instance, so far this year I've wished for A, a butterscotch ice cream that never melts, B, a Tyrannosaurus Rex, 3, a pair of x-ray glasses, 4, a time machine for Cosmo's birthday because he's very keen on time machines, especially ones made out of a bus, some tin foil and an alarm clock, 5, £43.82, and I did not get a butterscotch ice cream that never melts, or a pair of x-ray glasses, or a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and Cosmo did not get his time machine. He got some licorice sticks and a pen in the shape of a vampire, but he was pleased as punch anyway, because Henry Potts, who is his mortal enemy, has a pen in the shape of a werewolf, and Cosmo says vampires are more deadly than werewolves, and his pen would obliterate Henry Potts's pen, which it did, only Miss Patterson was not very happy at all about the ink on the floor, which Cosmo said was werewolf blood, which made Bridget Grimes cry because she thinks werewolves are real. But I have checked with Mr Schumann and they are not. They are only on television and in America. But I am not pleased as punch, especially about the £43.82, because that is how much I owe Mum for a lot of reasons, e.g. one, the at time I accidentally called India, b. the time we broke Dad's razor by shaving Georgia May Morton's head, which had super glue on it, Three, the time me and Cosmo broke the vacuum cleaner by sucking up some bubbles and I will pay, be paying her back until kingdom come. Only I wish it would come quickish because it's mum's birthday today and I need £3.99 to buy her a mug with a picture of a monkey on it that's in the window at the post office so I can give it to her at birthday tea later. Mum says she'd rather just have some peace and quiet because at that exact moment Daisy and Lucy B. Finnegan are standing on the table pretending to be international horse riders receiving Olympic medals for jumping over some red and white planks and they are very loud and Gran is watching the news which is about some bombs exploding which are very loud and Barry the cat is howling only it's not because of the bombs but because he does not like the man who does the news and he is quite loud and I am saying... But if you do not lend me some money, then I cannot buy you a present and you will be doubly cross with me. And so you see, it is completely not my fault. And I am saying it quite loud. So Mum says she is just glad that Dad is still out at work solving a crisis to do with a roundabout because at least it is one less noise to add to the cacophony. Which is when Dad walks in and adds his noise to the cacophony by saying... The roundabout is fixed, no thanks to Kenny Jupiter. Honestly, he has baked beans for brains. Oh, and I hope you don't mind, but I've invited Dee Dee over for birthday tea later and it will be absolutely fun, you will see. Only I think that possibly Mum will not see and she will mind because Aunt Dee Dee is almost never fun and almost always getting cross with me or Mum or Gran e.g. for accidentally letting Georgia May Morton Jones, who is my cousin and who is four and a bit and goes to the Drabble Academy for Girls, eat mud. And I am right because Mum says she wishes Dad would learn to think before he speaks or that a fairy godmother would appear and whisk her away to Timbuktu or even just to Chipping Broadly as long as it is very far away from all this hoo-ha. But until that happens, she's going to the hairdressers for a birthday trim and Shaniqua Reynolds had better not be over ambitious. And I am about to say that statistically, I do not think her wish will happen because I've still not got my Tyrannosaurus or the butterscotch ice cream that never melts or a pair of x-ray glasses. Only then I remember about the peace and quiet. So I go to Cosmo's house instead. Cosmo's house is good because his mum, who's called Sunflower, even though her real name is Barbara, does not believe in peace and quiet. She believes in free speech because it is Cosmo's human right. Even if the speech is being Darth Vader and saying, I am Darth Vader and I'm going to smite you with my omnipotent powers 143 times, which is what he did last Sunday. But today he's not keen on being Darth Vader. He's keen on swapping a rubber in the shape of a weasel for my Dogs of the World poster. 
This is because at school everyone is mad for swaps, e.g. A. Alexander Pringle has swapped a jam sandwich for Luke Bruce's peanut butter biscuit. B. Bridget Grimes has swapped a broken Barbie doll for Sherry Scarpelli's My Little Pony with the tail cut off. 3. Brady O'Grady has swapped a shiny 50 pence for Denzel Wellington's one pound coin with a dent in it. D. Henry Potts has swapped Optimus Prime, leader of the Autobots, for Jamal Malik's little brother Schwab, only Schwab is not very happy about this, and nor is Mrs Malik, and nor is Mr Schumann, who decides to ban swaps at school until we can learn what is swappable and what is not. So I say I will not swap my Dogs of the World poster for Cosmo's rubber in the shape of a weasel, but I will swap a tin of sardines that is past its use-by date, and which Gran was going to give to Barry for the rubber. And Cosmo says yes, because the tin might be an antique and worth a fortune, e.g. £50 in five years' time. And we can go on telly and everyone will gasp and wish they'd kept their tins of sardines. And I say it's a shame it's not five years' time now, because then I could sell the tin of sardines and pay Mum back £43.82 and buy her the mug with the monkey on it from the post office as it's only three ninety nine, Which is when Cosmo has a brilliant idea, which is not to buy the mug, but to swap something for it with Mrs Butterworth, who works in the post office and who has a moustache and a beady eye, which I know because she's mostly saying, I've got my beady eye on you, Penelope Jones. So we are investigating Cosmo's worldly possessions, i.e. the contents of his cupboard with the wonky handle, for something good to swap. And we find seven things, and they are, one, a pair of stilts made out of flower pots, two, Buckingham Palace on a key ring, C, a dried toad, D, a snow globe of Rapunzel that is leaky and all the snow is on the carpet. Five, three baby teeth. Six, a book about deadly beasts with the free glow-in-the-dark snake ring. G, a spy pen which uses invisible ink and you have to shine a torch on it to see what is written. And once we wrote, Henry Potts eats woodlice on his spelling book and Henry still hasn't seen it, which Cosmo says is brilliant, but I say is disappointing because where is the fun in that? Cosmo says Mrs Butterworth will not want the snow globe of Rapunzel that is leaky with all the snow on the carpet, or three baby teeth, or a book about deadly beasts with a free glow in the dark snake ring, which means she is mad because who would not want a book about beasts with a free glow in the dark snake ring? Anyway, it turns out she is doubly mad because she also does not want the pair of stilts made out of flower pots, or the Buckingham Palace on the key ring, or the dry toad, or the spy pan with invisible ink. And in fact, she does not want to swap the mug with the monkey on it that is only three ninety nine for anything except three ninety nine in actual money and not in foreign coins. And Cosmo says, what about an IOU, which is when you write down, e.g. IOU, four pieces of cola flavoured bubblegum on a piece of paper and give it to Alexander Pringle. Only Alexander Pringle says he's not falling for that again because Cosmo still owes him for the gum. And Mrs Butterworth says she is not falling for that again because Mr Nugent still owes her for a first-cast stamp and a packet of gypsy creams and she will never get that back because he perished in 1997. I say I am absolutely not going to perish, but Mrs Butterworth gives me a look with her beady eye that could quite possibly perish me anyway. So me and Cosmo are back at square one, i.e. Cosmo's house. And I'm going to finish it there and you can catch up with part two tomorrow. Bye.